Hey, what's the crack? Welcome to Film Resolved. Straight away, have a quick look for the time codes below and just see if there's any sections that you don't really need so you can skip them and save yourself some time. Did you know that the timeline timecode indicator is actually a tiny interactive tab that we can use to make really precise edits accurate down to a single frame? In today's episode, I'm going to show you how you can take advantage of this to speed up your editing. If you're new here, my name is Lee Dalton. I am a professional videographer and an aspiring cinematographer. And this is a channel where you can learn a wide range of filmmaking techniques and how to pull them all together in DaVinci Resolve. If you're finding this content helpful, please do remember to give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe and the notification bell. But with all that out of the way, let's jump into it. To start, let's show you how you can use this technique to move the playhead to a precise time on the timeline. So you're going to want to make sure that you have nothing actually selected in the timeline, no media, and that it's the timeline itself that you have selected. Then come up to the timeline indicator at the top right of your preview window and click on it to make it active. You can now type in whatever time you want, and in our case we'll just go 8 seconds and 11 frames and then simply hit enter. And that will move the playhead precisely to that point. Now say we change our mind and we actually want to be 11 frames back in the timeline. Well, if we click on it again to activate it and just type in minus 11, this will bring the playhead back in the timeline by 11 frames to eight seconds. And of course, if we want to move forward in the timeline, click on it, and say for three seconds, you will type in plus three zero zero, hit enter, and the playhead will move forward in the timeline by three seconds. So what do I mean by standard edits? What I mean is either dragging a clip up and down the timeline, adding or subtracting time from the top of the clip or from the tail of the clip. To move the entire clip up and down the timeline, select the clip you want to move and then come up to the indicator and type in plus two seconds. And that will move it up the timeline by two seconds. Now let's look at subtracting and then adding time to the tail of this clip. You want to select the tail handle of the clip. Then you can type into the timeline indicator minus 12 frames to subtract 12 frames or plus 12 frames to add back on 12 frames. Now let's select the top handle of our clip. Now, before I make this adjustment, I wanted to talk really quick about a mistake that I made when I first started using this technique. The way you should think about the plus and minus is in terms of left and right. And here's what I mean. The mistake I made was thinking to subtract 12 frames from this top handle I would type in minus 12 frames, but you can see that that has extended the footage out to the left, which means because it's the top handle, that's adding time to the clip. So if you're looking to subtract time from a top handle, you need to go plus 12 frames. Plus goes to the right, minus goes to the left. Here, we're going to look at the trim edit mode and as a result, some ripple edits. So first we will look at how to do a slip edit and then trimming the tops and tails of clips, but with that ripple effect that comes with this trim tool. To do a slip edit, just make sure that you have the trim edit tool selected and you wanna click the clip where you would normally click it to do a slip edit. Then you can go plus or minus followed by however many frames you need. To add or subtract time to the top or tail of a clip, but with a ripple edit, make sure you have that trim edit mode selected and it's the same as before. Select either the top or tail handle and go plus or minus by however many frames you want. Just remember that minus is left and plus is right. Lastly, I wanted to show you a really common situation in which I use this, and that is audio ducking. Now, before I push forward, just so you know, there is an automated feature that does ducking for you in Resolve, but sometimes its results aren't what we want, and this is where manual ducking comes in, and this is how I go about doing it as quickly as possible. 
So I like my audio ducking to take place over a period of 12 frames. So what I'll do is I go to where I'm about to start talking and then I'll use the technique to come back by six frames. Then I will add a keyframe. Then I will go forward by 12 frames. And then I'll add another keyframe and reduce the volume to what I see fit. Then I'm gonna to go to where I'm gonna stop talking and then pretty much repeat the process. Come back by six frames, add a keyframe, go forward by six frames, add a keyframe and bring back up the volume. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that I should have covered? Let me know in the comments below and while you're down there, if you have any questions, just leave them there too. My name is Lee Dalton and this is Film Resolved. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.